This video will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to install an extreme microcoil grill. Throughout this video, we will be referring to the extreme microcoil grill instruction manual. It is important that you read the manual for a thorough, detailed explanation of the installation procedures. The manual also contains an important safety checklist to ensure that your customer's door is installed properly and in a safe manner. This video is only meant to help demonstrate the procedure described in the full installation and maintenance manual. It is not a substitute for it. We are not responsible for any charges incurred through missing parts, operation, or damage due to improperly installed door assemblies. Only trained door systems technicians should install or perform maintenance on doors. For electrical connections, only trained electrical technicians should perform these operations. As with any installation, there are critical steps that must be taken before any install work can begin. Review materials, make sure you have all components, and review installation instructions and drawings. As you unload the different pieces, check the condition of them for any freight damage visible or concealed. If there is any freight damage or the delivery is incomplete, please follow the procedure outlined in the installation and maintenance manual in order to correctly address any issues. This is very important because if the installation is made with damaged product, we are not responsible for any resulting replacement or labor costs. Please be advised that this video was filmed in our controlled development area and may not meet job site safety regulations. When installing a door or on a job site, all safety gear should be worn and regulations followed. We recommend that before starting any work, completely rope off your work area with danger tape for your safety and the safety of those around you. We will now start the installation process with the installation of the guides. Determine which guide assemblies are utilized on the unit from the job construction drawings and compare to diagrams 5.1 and 5.2. Determine which side of the wall the operator is to be installed. For this installation, we will mount the operator on the left side. So this is the operator side and this is the adjuster side. If using an e-guide, separate the trim trim extension, and guide from the wall angle, if necessary, for aluminum models. Our aluminum model happens to be a Z-guide, so we can leave it on. Then, install the guides as usual, using the written instructions as a guide. You can also refer to the service door installation video on the Dealer Resource Center for details. The barrel and curtain will come from the factory assembled and packaged on a skid. The packaging can be removed only after the brackets are secured to the wall angles and the motor is installed. Make sure that the ends of the shaft stick out of the ends of the packaging. If not, remove a section large enough that the ends can be accessed. For ease of bracket and motor installation, we used a forklift to lift the assembly a few feet in the air. First, locate the brackets. Determine the operator and adjuster brackets by referring to figure 6.2 in the installation manual. The operator bracket will contain a bearing and holes to mount the operator. The adjuster bracket will contain a bearing only. Locate the shaft spacers and slide them on the gear end. Slide the operator and adjuster brackets on until the bracket is approximately 11 sixteenths of an inch from the edge of the outer shaft. Do not tighten the set screws at this point, as you may need to adjust the position of the bracket. Next, we will install the operator. Please note, the weight of the operator may shift the lift point on the forklift. Let's take a look at how the 300 series operator and apex control panel is installed. The following footage is from our 300 series door installation, which features a right hand of operation, but the process is the same. For this video, we will be using a vertical mount. First, assemble the mounting plate. Take the gearbox mount and put two half inch shoulder bolts and half inch washers through it. Then, take two vibration isolators and push onto the bolts. 
followed by an isolator spacer on each. The motor mount comes next, followed by another set of vibration isolators. Add the backing plate and then the half inch washer, followed by a 3 8 inch washer on each side. Secure with a 3 8 inch nylock nut. You can assemble the mounting plate for right or left-handed operation, depending on what side the motor is mounted. We assembled the motor mount for a left-handed door, but this door is right-handed. All that needs to change is the direction of the motor mount, and we're set for a right-handed operation. Attach the gearbox mounting plate to the operator using the carriage bolt, flat washer, and nylock nut. Do not tighten the bolts all the way at this time for ease of bracket alignment in the future. In the unlikely event of needing to remove for maintenance in the future, anti-seize lubricant has been provided. Prior to installation, apply the anti-seize lubricant to the gear end, gib key, and inside hub of the operator. Place the gib key in the keyway of the gear end. Slide the operator over the gear end of the gib key, ensuring the keyways are aligned. The keyways can be aligned by rotating the barrel by hand or utilizing the auxiliary hand chain on the operator. Align the operator and mounting plates so that the operator hangs freely on the gear end. Attach the operator mount to the head plate using the half inch flat washer, half inch lock washer, and half inch bolt. Then loosely tighten all bolts. The alignment of the brackets to the guides may be easier if the operator is not tightly secured to the bracket. Remove the bolt from the front of the gearbox housing and install the provided vent plug. Installation of the vent plug is critical to the safe operation of the operator. Failure to install the vent plug may cause permanent damage to the operator. Before hoisting the shaft into the guides, Refer to the hardware sheet and ensure that the proper type and quantity of fasteners were provided for the bracket installation. For this install, we need half inch round head carriage bolts. Raise the barrel assembly between the guides. Make sure you have the brackets in the upright position with the mounting holes facing the wall. It may be difficult to rotate the bracket when you're close to the wall. Slowly maneuver the barrel assembly towards the guide and align the mounting holes of the brackets with those of the wall angles. Insert the carriage bolts and snug tighten. Check to see that the barrel is positioned properly between the brackets, then tighten the set screws. Confirm that the barrel and curtain assembly are level after slowly removing the forks from under the assembly. A four foot or six foot level can be used. At this point, the packaging can be removed. At this time, you need to install the Apex Smart Controller control panel. Here's how it was installed for the 300 series door. When you look at the Apex Smart Controller, note that there are three wires already attached. Do not remove them. The control panel is mounted to the wall using bolts. Mount the panel with control buttons at least five feet above the floor. Make sure the wire run from the operator and control panel is no longer than 20 feet to maintain warranty. Distances of longer than 20 feet may be possible, but would require special cabling and must be factory supplied or specified to maintain the manufacturer's warranty. Now we will walk through how to connect the 300 series door motor to the Apex controller. Note, all electrical work must be performed according to local and state building codes. Here are the basic connections for a typical door configuration. You can find this diagram in the motor manual. And here's the typical control panel configuration. Again, you can find this diagram in the motor manual. Now we'll power the motor by connecting to the control panel. Match the wire colors, black, brown, blue, yellow, green to the top junction box and connect with wire nuts or crimp style splices. Use rigid conduit between the junction boxes and then connect the Apex Smart Controller to the bottom junction box. Once again, refer to the diagram in the operation manual if necessary. Then, 
Plug the brake power cable from the motor to the encoder cable from the panel. Now we're going to connect the incoming power. First, turn off the power breaker. One, run wire into the panel using one of the two pre-drilled holes located at the bottom of the control panel. Two, route the wire down the side of the control panel. Three, for a single phase connection, make connections to the A, C, and ground terminals. For a three phase connection, make connections to the A, B, C, and ground terminals. For this video, we will be using a three phase connection. Review the wiring. Double check all connections and verify there are no loose or broken wires. Next, it's time to install the photo eyes. The microcoil grill comes with the light curtains already installed in the guide. You can view the light curtain once you remove the bottom slotted guide trim. The photo eyes already come pre-installed onto the photo eye mounts. Take the red photo eye transmitter and attach on the operator side of the door with the hardware provided. Then take the yellow photo eye receiver and attach on the adjuster side of the door with the hardware provided. Once the photo eyes are secured to the guides, route the plug and play connectors from the control panel to each side of the door. Make sure the shorter cable runs to the operator side and the longer cable runs to the adjuster side. Use the access holes at the top of the guide to run the wiring through, using the pre-installed clips to keep the wiring in place. An important note, if you have any excess wiring, make sure to pull it back up through the guides to avoid interference with the sensors. Clip it to tuck it away. Then reinstall the slotted guide trim at the bottom and the trim extension directly above it if necessary. It's time for the commissioning sequence. You can view our commissioning video on the Dealer Resource Center. Once the commissioning sequence is complete, your door is ready to go. Thank you for watching our step-by-step -step instructions on how to install the microcoil grill. As a reminder, full installation instructions can be found on our Dealer Resource Center.